Welcome to the Web Piano Teacher Podcast. Gather together and relax with us as we perform your favorite songs, discuss what makes them great, and how to make it work on piano. If you'd like to learn, play, and share this song like Sean does using his revolutionary whiteboard technique, visit webpianoteacher.com and try out the free membership level. Please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And we're back with another song from Fleetwood Mac's Rumors album. Yes, we're going to do Songbird. Let's do it. did it Whoa. okay <laughs> Do you feel like you were hanging by threads a little bit <laughs> Greg well we don't practice these very much <laughs> you know no I think we do okay for that we just kind of you know also, learn them enough to get there we, don't, we listen to the album a lot <clears throat> you know yeah so that it's helps. an emotional song now yeah it takes a lot out of you I'd imagine to have to sing it all the long lines yeah and when you think about who wrote it who it's for, what it's about. Okay. Well, I don't it know all of that, me, man. but you know. Like, I really could cry. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, welcome to our Web Piano Teacher podcast. We're doing the Rub Rumors album in this series. We're doing every track on the album, and at the end, we'll do one of our own that we wrote in the style of Fleetwood Mac. I was waiting to see if you were actually going to, like, announce and commit to it. <laughs> I'm committed now. <laughs> Brother, I did it. So... <laughs> 
Yeah, so every song, um, and along with the podcast, you know, I'm, I'm a web piano teacher, you know, I've been doing that online for the last 15 years on YouTube, and I have a website, webpianoteacher.com, and I teach you how to play all of these songs on here, as well as thousands of other lessons I've done over the past uh, 15 years, but uh, this is what's special during this time, is I've taught every track on the whole album, mm -hmm. and it, it's a big undertaking, but it was really fun, glad I did it, and... Or to this song, to this point. Because every song is good. Yes, it's, and I've said this before, but it sounds, it, you listen to it as a greatest hits album almost. In fact, any greatest hits album of Fleetwood Mac is probably going to have every song yeah. on there. On so the this album. is the, this is number six yeah. um, track on the album. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what order they recorded this, but Christine, this is her song. She uh -huh. wrote it. <coughs> she did all of it. She, um, Normally on all of their songs, there's a lot of Lindsay Buckingham influence. Mm -hmm. um, not on this one. You can tell. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's completely different sound. And it's a it's a piano driven. It's, mm -hmm. It was written on the piano, so that's that's automatically going to make it different. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, her voice, <laughs> I think a lot of times she she does a lot of singing. But with the whole group in mind, you know, she does a lot of back and forth with Lindsay, like, uh -huh. um, don't stop. It's literally yeah. just her and Lindsay going back and forth, yeah. you know. So I thought for her to get a, a song that's entirely hers. And again, we talked about this. I don't remember in which episode. Uh, we watched an, in, I watched an interview of Stevie Nicks, and her thought was the draw to Fleetwood Mac was that they had the different vocalists, the different sounds, that it, it really kept their audience interested. Mm -hmm. And I think that's totally true because yeah. if you weren't a Fleetwood Mac fan and you were a Joni Mitchell fan <laughs> and you heard yeah. this song, you might become a Fleetwood Mac fan, yeah. you know? like Yeah, well, that, speaking of Joni Mitchell, I, was, I always, uh, you know, you can hear influences and you can definitely hear it here. Now, it's not something where I, I think she's, at all trying to sound like Joni Mitchell. It's just an mm -hmm. influence. And, you know, why do I say that? Well, the, the way the, she plays the piano is very Joni-ish. Lyrical. Um, and lyrical. And even the way she sings, um, those melismas, those when she would have a, a syllable but then sing extra you. notes on. Yeah, that stuff. Which the OU sound, I'm just going to say it's really hard to sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did very well, I, th I thought, on. And you, you uh, I think it's difficult because you're very creative and you always want to make it your own and sing it your own way, <laughs> but to 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 try to match what Christine did would uh, and I, I think you did that very yeah, well. Some of her choices, I don't know if they're just difficult mm -hmm. <laughs> or they're just difficult for me. The way she did songs mm -hmm. and the the words she used, well, like I said, to put you to have to sing you and do a little run like that. Yeah. It's challenging. And sometimes the person's voice will do that because they'll write for their voice, you know, and it's like no one's going to write a song better than the person for the person than the person. If the person can write a song, then they will for their own voice. And and she you know, has a, a thicker voice. She has it's a more unique airy voice, too. Yeah. And you know, like, like Lindsay has a, a high, more thin voice mm -hmm. to me, but she has a very it's thicker and it's, it has some airiness to it. And But she has pretty good control to move it around. Yeah. As well, too. Um, so mm -hmm. I thought this was interesting. Christine, her father was a concert violinist, ah. violin instructor, and a music lecturer at a college. Okay. Uh, her mother was a medium, psychic, faith healer. Okay, okay. <laughs> and her grandfather, <laughs> who had a big influence in her life, was an organist for Westminster Abbey. Was that her, her dad's? Um, I'm going to guess her dad's at... Okay. I, just looked this up. <laughs> but she definitely had musical influence. Yeah. And they, um, so the book I read by Ken Calais, which was the producer of this album, he said Christine was very particular, precise. He said she has perfect pitch. Mm -hmm. And so if they brought in a piano, like an actual piano, and it wasn't up to her standards, uh -huh. They would have to bring somebody in to tune it. They stop. No, yeah. I cannot play this. Yeah, and I can relate with that. <laughs> and it's not a it's not a thing where you're being snooty. No, 
mean, you can be snooty about it, but <laughs> there's not, it, it's, it's, uh, you can't do it. Yeah. It's just, it grates on your, it's like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah. <laughs> except worse. <laughs> and it's not where <clears throat> you can just push through and do it. It really becomes physically impossible if you're used, you know, every key ha is where it's supposed to be. And if it's not, especially if it's, I don't know. It's just, it's in Would you say too that like perfect, <clears throat> I think people throw around the phrase perfect pitch uh -huh. a lot and that maybe it's actually more rare than people say it is. I don't know. Would you say that's true? Yeah. I think not? there are a lot of people that are, are say that and they have maybe really good relative pitch. Because I was going to say, I don't know if she had perfect pitch. I mean, someone said she did. So, okay. But I'm yeah. going to say, if her dad was a concert violinist and her grandfather was an organist and they were, I mean, I feel like music was probably yeah. constantly and that's an going. Im that's an important part in developing that because people are always around yes. music when that develops. Because if you're not around music, it's not going to develop in you at the certain age where it's mm -hmm. supposed to develop. I don't know when that is. Um, and I, I can't remember what, how it was for me. It just seems like it always was. But I definitely was around music. My whole life. And, and it really is an impossibility if a, something is tuned down, um, you know, a quarter tone or something, and then you have to play, you know, in C, mm -hmm. and it's not C. It's not. And you, you just, <laughs> you can't do it. Physically, you can't, yeah. you can't do it. So it actually becomes a limitation sometimes. So another cool thing about this song, and you probably, if you're listening to the album in order, mm -hmm. this song has a different sound than the rest of the other oh, songs. Yeah. And not like musically. I mean how the recording is done. It has a different sound. It sounds like a live recording. Mm -hmm. Which it was. Okay. <laughs> so Ken Kelly decided that sh this song needed a concert hall. Huge grand piano stage. Okay. For Christine to record this song. So he... Um, Rented out the Zellerbach Auditorium. He got a nine-foot Steinway there. And okay. he mic'd the whole room. Now, this is Ken Kelly's main, this is his specialty. Okay. Before he was producing this album, yeah. he was doing mainly live recordings. That's how he got the job with Fleetwood Mac, because okay. he did a phenomenal live recording of Rhiannon. Okay. When they were touring for the previous album. And so they were like, hey... Do you want to produce this album? So this was kind of his first in-studio mm -hmm. big thing. So for him to get to do this, I think, was like a nice break for him. Like, okay, here's my comfort zone. Here's what I like to do. We're going to capture this amazing live recording. Yeah. He also knew that with such an intimate song and a personal emotional song, just getting her playing and singing. Yeah was going to bring a better result vocally than it would be if he recorded just the playing Very true. and the singing separately. And they tried it, mm -hmm. and nothing was as good as what they got. And they did compromise a little bit of the quality of the sound yeah. of the vocal track mm -hmm. by deciding to keep it from the live version. Yeah, like the, the marriage of the accompaniment and the voice is perfect when you're actually singing while you're playing because that was a challenge for me singing with you playing because yeah. it felt like there were parts where I wanted to like change the tempo a little bit or slow okay. it down or come in at what the phrasing I was feeling in my well, experience as a good accompanist I'm supposed to allow you to do that <laughs> <laughs> well I know we were trying to stay but, true to what the song was and also yeah. anyway but I can see how if I was playing it, it would have been a different Yeah, it's result. never as exactly, it's, the marriage is never as close as, as when you're the one playing. Mm -hmm. and singing. Even if you, you know, record it first, the piano, and then go back and sing, it's never going to line up, right? It's never going to have, you know, it's just, it, and I've experienced that too myself. So. He even bought her flowers, like yeah. a dozen roses, and had them, like, on the piano for when she arrived. Okay. Just to, uh -huh. I just That's thought cool. that was sweet. Yeah. I think he liked working with her um, but ju just because she was a really hard worker. Mm -hmm. She was very decisive, which I think makes it easy. Yeah. And I think she made good decisions, which makes it easy. You know what I mean? Like yeah. 
decisions about the music. Like, it wasn't like, I don't know, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Like, when she knew what she wanted to play, she knew the sound she wanted, she knew the piano or keyboard she wanted to use. Like, yeah, I think he just enjoyed that about her. But you did also wouldn't you didn't get in her way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and she she's a good counterweight for Lindsay too. I think I do. Yeah, she's a because guitar people and piano people write songs differently. They tend to think differently, mm -hmm. and I, f I felt like her the songs that she mostly wrote. You can you can hear that, and then he's he's a different way. So it really does keep the band fresh and interesting. It does. There's different vocal styles and the and the way they write music. So who would decide? Like if they, you know, if you're a band like this and you're bringing in songs, who decides, oh, this goes in an album, this doesn't? You know, I'm not sure because there were songs that they worked on. Yeah. That didn't make this album. Okay. So just kind of general consensus, this isn't working or. Yeah. I mean, there were songs they completed. Okay. That didn't make this album. So I don't know if it's like a, hey, we're aiming to make a 40 minute album. Yeah. This fits, this doesn't. You know what I mean? I just wondered that. I don't know. I think <laughs> it's just a decision. I mean, I'm sure there is record, yeah. like, label exec. Yeah. And there's a, you know, 40 minutes doesn't sound that long, but there's a lot of content because they don't, you know, ramble on with solos and no. and mater long introductions before they finally sing. You know how some bands do mm -hmm. that, and then that takes up half the album, <laughs> just the before they finally, you know, long intros and, and long instrumentals. It's mostly, you know, you get every bang for your buck here. They're yeah. Uh -huh. So I do. I'm like going to try to not cry. Because About so to tell you the know, story? Yes. Okay. So Christine and John, the bassist, were married. Yeah. So this is one of those times everybody wants to know, what's the meaning of this song? What's, and, and, and you know, nobody knows sometimes or there's I'm no sure meaning. I'm sure everybody knows already. This <laughs> is a very. But this is a song that has a, has a meaning. Yeah. yeah. So she wrote it. Their marriage had broken up. Uh, John was a heavy drinker mm -hmm. among other things but alcoholism and not the kind like he knew also like it was just sort like a sad like mm -hmm. he knew he was an alcoholic he didn't like it and he couldn't stop and it, he like it ruined his marriage he loved christine she loved him but there was just that point where it's like we can't keep doing this yeah and so she walked away and then to have to work together day in and day out <laughs> and still like love the other person and still see the cycle continuing and see yeah. that it's not just about the drinking and like the phys the physical thing he was dealing with, but just like the cycle of the emotions and mm -hmm. all that stuff would be so hard. I can't imagine working in the environment that they worked in. And having to emotionally deal with that. Yeah. So So we'll this yeah, I know you normally you But the line I, I have to like mentally prepare myself every time to sing and I wish you all the love in the world, but most of all I wish it for myself because I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like oh <ugh. laughs> I'm getting teary uh. because I don't know. <laughs> it's close to my heart. Yeah. People who sh have those struggles. Yeah. So she was singing this, and and he knew he knew it was about him. Everyone knew it was about him. Yeah. So he brought it oh, in. Oh, there was a quote. He said, "When Christine played Songbird, grown men would weep." Mm -hmm. And he said, "I did every single night, like, because he knew." Uh huh. I just thought it's so like tender. Yeah. And that, like, when you love somebody and you release them, but you still love them and you're still in their life. And, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, this yeah. song gets me. It's not really getting me that way, but <laughs> I, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I it, it's probably one of the my least favorite songs in the album, though I like it. I mean, and, you know, there's a lot of great songs. It grew on me. Yeah. If, because when you're listening to the whole album, mm -hmm. it does take you out of the mood of the overall sound because it does sound like a live recording. I mean, it was a live recording. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But it's like I, you're sort of comfortable and used to. I mean, you, you went through five other songs where they were a pretty consistent sound mm -hmm. and volume. And then 
as soon as she starts playing this, it just sounds different. So it's a little jarring to me. So I did mm-hmm. have to get used to it. Yeah. But now if I, you know, if I try to imagine it not on the album, it's really, really missing something. I know. There, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a great contrast to all, there's a lot of uppity songs, you know, that yeah. moving a lot of driving songs. So this is, is one great contrast with just, just, be, there's other instruments like, there's a little guitar, right? Yeah. Mm-mm. Oh, there's not on this. It's just piano all the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm thinking of, uh, oh, daddy. We'll do that one later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. Okay. Is this a hard song to play on piano? No, it's really not. Um, and if you want to get into that Joni Mitchell style, um, I think it's, this is a great one. Um, yeah, you have what we call a lot of octave and fifth on the left hand. Where you're just doing octaves, you know, like a bass note, but then the fifth in the middle. And that's all Joni did much of the time. Mm-hmm. Her her piano playing was very simplistic, very effective, but she had a lot of, like if I just did that, you know, I'd think either Johnny Mitchell or Carol King. <laughs> and when you were two. saying on Never Going Back Again, don't yeah. use pedal. Yeah. On this one, you can use a oh, ton yeah. of pedal. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You have to. <laughs> yeah. You have to connect it, but make sure you make, you change when, when the chords change. Yeah, very different style of playing, very chord based. Um, Little country thirds here and there. God, Johnny didn't do that a whole lot. Mm-mm. But she had a lot of... But Christine was coming from a very blues background. Yeah, yeah. So she had probably pretty good chops to play some stuff. I, I bet... I haven't listened to a lot of their live performances, but I bet she could cut loose on some blues stuff. Well, yeah. Ha- <clears throat> Fleetwood Mac was live. a British Fleetwood yeah. Mac was blues. Well, she wasn't with them then, though, right? Uh, she was for a few years. Okay. And then she was also with a band, I thought this was called Chicken Shack. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. It was more of a... <laughs> to change the rating on this. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, Chicken Shack. It I just know. makes me think of like how you always want to eat fried chicken. And I'm like, no, <laughs> fried chicken will kill you. <laughs> I do love fried chicken. Okay. You know, we got to get off this Now I want fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> change. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Anyway, let's play it. Let's play it out. Okay. A bit. You can learn how to play this on webpianoteacher.com. <laughs> 